Friday, first day in the seventh month of the year 2016. Good evening and welcome to this 8 p.m. newscast on STV. In our news agenda, both upper and lower houses of parliament today ended their June 2016 sessions with the lower house of assembly providing amendments to the controversial article 127 of the penal code, which requested impunity of government officials. Military officers of Cameroon's Defense Force today received medals to promote their hard work in the safety of Cameroon. Unions, acknowledgements and promotion was at the order of the day. Details of these and more in a G feed. Good evening, you're watching the 8 p.m. English newscast on Spectrum Television. We begin right away in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, to talk about the June 2016 parliamentary session, which has ended this 1st of July at the National Assembly with the amendment of Article 127 of the Penal Code. The article prescribed impunity to government officials. Larry Ned Apaje looks at the high points of today's plenary sitting. The revisited Article 127 of the Bill on the Penal Code has finally been adopted at the National Assembly this 1st of July 2016 after SDF members of Parliament on Thursday pointed out the violation of amendment procedures of a bill as prescribed by the standing orders of the House. The plenary session that was suspended Thursday evening for 10 a.m. this 1st of July resumed 30 minutes after with the presentation of the Committee on Constitutional Laws report and general observations from members of parliament. The question some MPs like SDF's Awudumbaya and UPC's Bapod report have asked is why Cameron's parliament is in a rush to adopt a penal code bill which took the government over 10 years to study. In this regard, Honorable Awudumbaya has sent a message to the President of the Republic through the Vice President proposing that the time frame for parliamentary sessions should be increased to four times. In the Mehmet Division, Southwest Region of Cameroon have thanked the head of state, Paul Beer, who is president of Cameroon's Judicial Council, for his intervention into the controversy surrounding the bill on the penal code. On the other hand, they have shamed members of parliament for not taking the interest of the population. Peter Sosie. Lawyers in Mehmet Division of the Southwest Region see the decision to rescind the controversial bill on the penal code for another scrutiny as unconstitutional, of yet are satisfied the that the worries the raised the in the bill Assembly, are being addressed. The men in weeks earlier staged a protest march denouncing some clauses. Trade unionists and workers have expressed their gratitude to Cameroon's government due to several changes effected upon worker status in the country. An increase in family allowance and a hike on the ceiling from 300 to 750,000 CFA, just to name a few. They, however, expect more from the government. Yvonne Ako reports from Yaoundé. Trade unionists and their colleagues in the consultation committee in charge of social dialogue say they have achieved a lot on behalf of workers. The family allowance rate payment has increased from a, a reasonable amount. And uh, we also talk about the, the issue of the, the ceiling. You know, previously there was a ceiling on the payment of a pension. That ceiling has been taken up to 750. It was a 750,000 francs. It used to be 300,000 francs, which meant that no matter what you earn, your pension will be calculated on 300,000 francs. But now the ceiling has been raised to 750,000 francs. Just like Oliver Twist, the trade unionists and other members of the committee say they expect more from the government for better working conditions of workers. We still expect the social reforms to continue in that particular light. We are thinking about the universal uh, health coverage that gives some kind of uh, assurance to the worker and the family. We are also thinking about uh, the issues surrounding the social insurance because there are some certain issues now whereby the payments are not very, very regular. Uh, we actually need government intervention to support the same pay so that they will pay workers regularly. Workers who are on pension should be paid. Workers who are still in service, delivery fee and maternity leave and so on should be, should be, should be up to date because CMPS has been complaining about lack of uh, the funds. The issue of the minimum wage has also been reviewed by the committee members who are so far delighted with the outcome of their session. 
The Committee of Ministers of the International Commission of the Congo Bangi Shanga Basin met today in Yaoundé to talk about financial crisis hindering the smooth functioning of transboundary water management of the Congo Basin. Our reporter, Larinette Apaje, took interest on some solutions to the crisis. Cameroon being a shareholder of 85,300 square kilometers of the Lake Chad Basin, that is 2% of the entire water resources, is entitled to profits generated from the water resources. This is Cameroon's right. So too is her obligation as a member of the International Commission of the Congo Obangi Sanga Basin, SICOS, to solve current crises. It is a crucial session. At this time, we are having serious financial crisis because the financial recovery of member countries is limited. Member countries like Cameroon, Congo, Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Gabon ought to contribute financially and add to funds from projects for the running of the commission. But the current deviation of expenditure with the coming of insecurity crisis is affecting the running of SICOS. Si, uh, cette situation venait à perdurer. If this financial situation persists, SICOS will find it impossible to meet up to its obligations signed by heads of state of member countries, which will end up at a detriment of the population. Since the Congo Basin has a hydropower potential of 100,000 megawatts, 5.3 kilometers square forest, and huge biodiversity, the Minister's Committee, which is the executive organ of SICOS, has resolved during this Friday's 13th session to increase development projects relating to resources from the Congo Basin, which will bring forth income for the benefit of all member countries. Still in Yaoundé, the CRTV new general manager, Sharon Dongo, and director Emmanuel Wangibe have been tasked to continue serving the interests of the state and that of the general population. This was echoed by Isa Chiroma Bakari today, Cameroon's Minister of Communication, as he officially installed the new administrative heads of the Cameroon Radio Television. Yvonne Ako witnessed the ceremony and brought back this report. Charles Ndongo and Emmanuel Wongibe, who will henceforth serve in the capacities of general manager and director respectively at the Cameroon Radio and Television, have been assigned by the government to continue rehabilitation and infrastructural projects which began in 2014. They will also have to improve on the contents of CRTV programs while placing the interests of the state top on their agenda. I expect from the new director, Mr. Charles Pitagon Dongo, that he is uh, trying to put in place a technical infrastructure so that he can face the, co the competition in the multimedia view. I hope that uh, the collaborator will uh, give him hand, they will uh, work together so that uh, CRTV will become number one. The new management team has equally been urged to facilitate the creation of the five other CRTV channels and make it accessible to the local and international populations. The political undertone of the appointments of Charles Ndongo and Emmanuel Wongibe could not go unnoticed. Uh, we are very happy because uh, one of uh, our militants has been appointed uh, director general of, of CRTV. And we are very grateful to the uh, national president of CPDM. Going by the Minister of Communication, teamwork between the general manager, the director, and the rest of the staff of the CRTV will be the working tool for the institution to effectively inform, educate, and entertain the public. Back to the economic capital, Douala, to talk about military officers of Cameroon's Defense Corps who have been acknowledged and promoted in a two-phase occasion at the courtyard of the second joint military region today in the economic capital, Douala. Peter Saucier reports. 79 officers of the Air Force, Navy, Ground Forces, and the National Gendarmerie in the Litwa region are decorated with medals of the country's national orders in connection with the May 20 Medal Awards. The military and non-military staff of the Defense Corps in Douala are given medals of valor, merit, sports, and labor for services rendered to fatherland. In similar fashion, 26 officers, 20 sub-officers, and those of the rank and file appointed on June 13 by the Chief of Armed Forces, President Paul Bia, have been raised to superior ranks in the Army. 
Recipients use the occasion to celebrate, but are conscious of the task ahead. I have to work harder than I have been doing before, so I thought I should merit another level. Chaired by Littoral Governor Samuel Dodone Ivaha Dibois, in the presence of senior military and administrative officials of the Littoral region, plus family members, these soldiers, by this act of reward, are reminded of the need to keep the flames of hard work, humility and discipline burning as they face their next assignments.